Hi there. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate by experiment the voltage spike commonly known as back EMF generated across the coil which is an inductor when current to it is switched on or off. An inductor stores energy, it doesn't convert energy other than the small internal resistance that it may have. Energy is stored in the coil in the form of a magnetic field. An inductor opposes changing current through it, which is the equivalent of mechanical inertia when mass opposes a change in moving velocity. When current changes in a coil, in this example switching on or off our 25 volt DC supply, the self-induced EMF around the coil will have a polarity which will oppose the change that caused it, which is Lenz's law, essentially energy conservation. So when current switches on, the coil tries to hold the current down. It's a delay action to reaching steady state current defined by Ohm's law, which will be the 25 volts divided by our circuit rule loop through the 68 ohm external resistor here to limit the current. So we've got 6 internal to the coil plus external 68 which gives 74. Ohm's law 25 volts divided by 74 ohms gives us a current of 338 milliamps is what we predict. The current will be switched on or off by making a simple mechanical metal switch. Switch that current back on. So when we switch the current on, we can see on this meter it reads 333 milliamps, which is very close to the 338 predicted by Ohm's law. When the switch will be opened, once there's a magnetic field established around the coil. When the switch is then opened, an air gap now exists which effectively has massive resistance and the coil will try and keep the current flowing by reversing its polarity so it can dissipate the energy stored in the magnetic field through any resistance in a circuit loop. With just an air gap and no mitigating discharge resistors or flyback diodes around it, there is no circuit damping and the circuit will and the back EMF will tend to oscillate. What we're going to do is to mitigate large voltage spikes and any oscillations we will implement effectively a negative feedback loop that will act against the stimulus that caused it as in implementing damping resistor or flyback diode. If we connect resistor component across the coil, this facilitates here, or a bulb indeed, this facilitates a discharge current loop allowing the energy stored in the magnetic field to dissipate in a controlled way. The smaller and smaller values of R will tend to maintain more and more critical damping, removing oscillations substantially reducing the magnitude of the back EMF which mitigates any potential damage to components from large voltages and sparking across any air gap. So remove that just now. So what we can see if we switch these back on what we can see there is we don't have any discharge resistor in here at the moment and what we can see is the back EMF, this is when we, we've charged up, well, we've got a magnetic field around the coil. If we now open the switch, we can see large voltages of hundreds of amps generated across the coil. And it does tend to oscillate before it settles down. This is trying to spark across the air gap, which is non-ideal. So if we put... 10k resistor in there across the coil the effect will be to slightly dampen the voltage but we've still got oscillation so what we'll do is we'll put a smaller resistor in there we'll put 1k resistor instead of 10k in there let's see the effect 
and we now have critical damping. So what does critical damping mean? We still get a large voltage spike but not as large and we now have an e a smooth exponential curve defined by the inductance and resistance so that it eventually dissipates down to zero volts in a controlled way. So no resistor, we have oscillation, put a resistor in we then have critical damping. It's effectively a negative feedback loop. So if we juice that down even more, let's take it down to 47 ohms, then we reduce the voltage even smaller. So now with 47 ohms across the 6 ohm coil, we've now got the voltage down. It's only really, that's 10 volts per division. We've got it down to less than a 20 volt uh, back EMF spike on it there. So the question might be when we switch it on we'll just change the trigger point when we switch it on we get a voltage pulse like that. That voltage pulse there is not problematic because it's not back EMF it is the op opposition from the coil it is an induced voltage but the induced voltage can only be a maximum of 25 volts from here. So if there was no damping resistor, you would get the full 25 volts across the coil when you switch it on for a period of time until the magnetic field builds up and then we get steady state voltage of about 2 volts across the coil. So if we have 47 ohms in there, what we effectively do is get a voltage divider between the 47 ohms and the 68 ohms and it reduces the voltage down to approximately half. We don't get the full 25 volts. It's about 10 volts there. No damping resistor, we're going to get the full 25 volts here. That shape is largely determined by well, determined partly by the electronics inside the DC's power supply and by the inductance and the circuit loop. So, if we then, what is the effect to actually show that voltage other than on the oscilloscope? What we can then do is show it through a bulb. So what we've got is a filament bulb there. Filament bulbs are non-ohmic, which means they don't follow Ohm's law. So when they're flashing, they'll have very high resistance because it's glowing and emitting photons. At the moment, I'm holding the switch down. There is a slight glow. And the reason for that is because of the internal resistance of the coil of about 6 ohms, we have a voltage drop of 1.9 volts across there so the bulb is has got a small glow. When I switch it off you get a flash and when we switch it on we get a bigger flash. Why do we get a bigger flash is because from the, the oscilloscope you can see the energy content of that voltage lasts for well the energy contents larger because there's more milliseconds in the pulse. If we go back and trigger on the back EMF and just put the volt scale up a bit uh, what will happen now is we can see that the bulb is doing critical damping and we get a flash when we switch it on when it's steady state because there's about two volts across the coil we do get continuous current through the coil which is defined by 30 milliamps if we have 2 volts divided by 30 milliamps, it's approximately in the region of 60 ohms resistance at the moment. We get a flash when we switch it off, which is not as bright because this doesn't have the energy content. The spike doesn't last as long as when you switch it on because it's damped. Uh, and when we switch it on, you get a brighter spark. So what the, bite, the bulb is showing is... On you get a large voltage spike, off you get a voltage spike, steady state it glows slightly because there is two volts across the coil due to the internal coil resistance. Thank you for watching that demonstrates voltage spike and we get a visual effect through the bulb and 
on the oscilloscope screen where we can actually see the voltages. So just to reiterate, on 2 volts across the coil we get a large voltage spike, we get a flash and we're still getting the steady state current. When we switch it off we get another flash, not quite as bright because it doesn't have the same energy content because it doesn't last as long. Thank you for watching.